hand crank sewing machines and colorful pieces of fabric were given to the Seminole Indians of Florida by traders in the 1800s. Well, I think the hand crank sewing machine was the favorite possession of the Seminole Indian. Now, when the original tribes of the Creek Confederation moved from Georgia and Alabama, they had to change their garments of dress from buckskin and leather to loosely woven cotton fabrics, all oh, because of the humidity and the heat. Now, the Seminole women would often wear skirts, long skirts of calico and gingham, and they would have it roped around their waist and embellish those edges with Seminole patchwork. Now, they devised a method of taking those long strips and hand cranking them together on the sewing machine. Oh, this is so much fun. Well, once they'd have those long strips all sewn together, then they just would go ahead, take those strips and press them. Let me see if I can just lay out some pieces for you like that. Press them, and then they would cut them apart on the angle and set them back together, oh, just with a little offsetting, so that they would get something that looked like this. Well, then they go, went ahead and made pieces from nature after their patchwork. Look at this. Looks like some trees in the forest with that bright blue sky. Oh, it's wonderful. And look at this. Of course, lightning in the dark night sky. And of course, oh, raindrops in the Florida daylight. Oh, I've seen that, I know that. Well, they did this beautiful patchwork just with very simple tools. All they needed to have was just a pair of scissors like this, maybe that seam guide on their sewing machine, and their measurements were embedded right in their sewing machine. Well, today I want to honor the American Seminole woman for her domestic resourcefulness with this beautiful patchwork star. Oh, the colors are bright and vibrant. Now, Cheryl Minshew made this one, and then she designed that Seminole border. Now, as soon as I show you the star, I'll show you how to do the Seminole, but we're going to do it with modern tools. to add Mrs. Billy Bowlegs to my gallery of stars. Well, unfortunately, Native American women were not referred to by their own name, but rather by their husband's name. Well, Billy Bowlegs was a chief, a Seminole chief in the 1800s. And I sure hope Mrs. Billy Bowlegs loved to quilt. Well, let's start right in the center of the star. It looks like a windmill effect right here. Now, the very center block is a four and three-fourths inch square. It's perfect for a fussy cut. And actually, Linda Dahlman went ahead and did some embroidery work in it. And then these pieces around the outside edge are both four and a half inch squares. Gives that swirling or windmill effect. Oh, it looks great. Now take those two four and a half inch squares and put them right sides together. They should be like a light medium and a dark medium, whatever, something like this. Then take a pencil and a ruler and draw diagonal lines from corner to corner. Oh, let's see if I can get those in there. Wonder what the Seminole Indians use for marking. Probably not this pencil. Okay, once you have the diagonal lines drawn, you need a quarter inch seam. Oh, always that quarter inch seam. And you wanna just start and drop your presser foot so that it's on the left side of the line. This is gonna be tricky, so watch this. So left side of the line, and also if you have the needle in or the needle down feature, use it because right when you get up to that line, whoops, <laughs> we wanna stop right on that line. It looks like I'm about one stitch over. You wanna go right across the middle on that line, raise your presser foot, and then drop it so that you're going down the right side of the line. Oops, sounds complicated, but not really at all. Down one side, across the middle, and then down the opposite side. Now we're just gonna turn it and do exactly that same technique. Start on the left side, zoom right down there. When you get to that middle, raise your presser foot, pivot, go straight across the middle, 
needle in, pivot, and go down the other side. So you've actually stitched in a cross shape. You have a little tweak right in the middle of each one of those. Now, before you cut it apart, the best thing to do is set that seam. You tend to get a little puckering whenever you sew on it, so do set the seam, just going, pressing right over it, and then cut it on all four lines. Line up that ruler corner to corner, one cut, and then the opposite. Now, the technique that we just did is a technique so that whenever you take these, and you press them, then they're all four identical. Okay, so lay them on your pressing mat with the darkest fabric on the top, and just go ahead and lift that up and over so that the seam is right behind the darkest piece. Ooh, how about some good old stacking up steam? Love it. <laughs> I can't imagine the Seminole Indians out and in, say the forest using steam like this. Except sometimes it gets hot enough that they probably just have steamy heat and moisture. Okay, now what I'm going to do while I'm at the pressing mat is take the very center square. This is that one that's four and three fourths inches, and you want to press it in half first one way, then fold it again the other. So you've literally folded that piece of fabric into force because you really want to get that straight. Gosh, if you don't get this straight now, it's not going to work. Okay, so now once those quarters are pressed in, take a chalk mark because as you keep on going, you tend to, um, to uh, press out the folds, whatever, but make a chalk mark right at those four quarters, as dark as you can. Pin helps too. And then take these pieces, now that they're pressed, and line them up so that the seam is perfect right on that chalk mark. Ooh, get that right, that looks good. On one side, pretty amazing, I'm using pins. But this is important, so line up that seam right there with that chalk mark, get that all lined up, and push that through in place. Okay, now, it's just that same quarter inch seam that you wanna go ahead and sew down one side of this Keep that seam flat. You can go ahead and use your stiletto. Hold that straight. Get that pin out of there. I think it's going to help. And then once you've gone down one side, raise your presser foot, whip it around, and just sew it on the opposite side. You know, when I was sewing with the hand crank, it was funny. Just really forgot what I was doing. I kept on looking for my foot pedal. Every time I started sewing, I'd check underneath my table. Okay, now both of these sewn on either side of it. Let's just clip right here and you want to set the seams again, set the seams and then lift that over so that the seams are behind that square. Right in the center one way. See whenever you press you tend to get rid of the chalk marks so it's hard to see. Got to keep track of that. All right, two sides. Only have two more left. So take these pieces now, line up the seam again on the center, line that up, pin it in place, and you see that there's extra hanging over on both sides. Got those tips, equal tips hanging out. And if you go ahead and mark these centers, very important in the final step in squaring it up. Now, quarter inch seam, just step on the gas. Um, I didn't mind using that hand crank sewing machine. Actually, it worked great. The one thing I did miss was the thread cutter. I was always looking for a thread cutter on it. So hold that down. Stiletto's perfect for this. Make sure that's lined up. And then once you've gone down one side, go ahead, whip it around, and just get that on the opposite side. Now, if we are lucky, cut those threads right there. If we are lucky, this is going to be a little oversized. It should be just a little larger than six and a half inches, so we're going to have some room to square it up. So now, take this piece and set the seam one more time on the top. And this time, you want to just press it open so that the seams are now behind that center square. <laughs> now, let's see if all of that pinning and measuring worked out for me. 
should be six and a half inches. So take your square up ruler. Now see how the red, the, the red is in the same position the whole way around, and that creates that swirling effect. Now, take your square up ruler and drop it. Oh my gosh, there's not a lot to spare right here. But drop the diagonal line going right down through, right on the seams, line that up, and cut up and over, trim it on two sides, turn it around, and then all you need to do is just drop it and then square it on those last two sides. Ooh, looking good. Let's get rid of these and we're ready to go on. I already showed you how to do the Barbara Frecci star. Now that's the 95 year old woman that waved that union flag. Plus I showed you how to do the Harriet Tubman star, old the Underground Railroad conductor during the Civil War. Now they all three have the same outside edges, just the centers are different. So I want to show you how to do the calculation so you can do your own points on the star. Then you won't need me. But let's take a look at that block. We call it the flying geese patch. And it actually comes from two different sizes of squares and that's what we want to calculate. This part right here is the geese. That's the smaller part, the geese. And then the two larger pieces, oh, those are the wings. So we know that this piece right here is six and a half inches and the corners, the four corners on all of them are three and a half inches. So we need pieces that are three and a half inches by six and a half inches. Oh, let's do some math here. Now we actually want to work with the finished size. So let's take off the seam allowance on both of those pieces. So we need a three by six. The piece we want to focus on is that six inch piece. Now take and add one and a half inches to it and you get seven and a half inches. That's the size square for the geese. The smaller square, the size for the geese. And then add another one and a half inches for nine inch squares and that's the size of your wings. You only need to have one square. So that's the measurement for your two squares. Pretty easy stuff. Now let's review the method. Take those two squares, put them right sides together. You put the smaller one on top for the geese, the wings underneath, and center it perfectly. Draw a diagonal line, ooh, and then just go right down both sides of that diagonal line with your quarter inch seam. Looking easy. So once you have your seam done, cut it apart. When you open it up, you have those two really weird squares. Actually, they're not a square at all. And when you take those two pieces and you put them right sides together, there's no way you can line up that seam. But you can line up the outside edges and you just have these funny tails sticking out. Now take these, draw another diagonal line, so on both sides, and cut it apart. And when you open it up, this is what you have. This is really strange because you see no match right in the middle. This makes two of your geese. So all you need to do is just cut these in half and then this piece is what you square up to three and a half by six and a half. Jeez, see if you can remember all of that. Now take those pieces you have your three and a half inch corner squares. You're gonna go out in all of the corners and then these, the geese patch right here where actually the star points go right around the outside edge. And when you're sewing your block together, make sure that you line up these seams and match them together. And you'll just fly right through this. The Native American Seminole women were the original strippers. That's quilt strippers, you see. Well, they actually took their 100% cotton fabric and tore it into strips. Well, they did such beautiful patchwork, all with torn strips. Now, you can see here that there are four different fabrics in the Seminole. There are two in the outside that actually you see very little of. The two center ones you see more of two different sizes of strips. Now, if the Seminole women had this modern tool, they would love it. It's great for cutting strips. 
Now the largest size strip is one and three-fourths inches. So if you just take this strip, it's actually a cutter attached right to a ruler. So line up that ruler at one and three-fourths inches. This is the cutter right here. Just lay your hand flat and you can put your hand right on this and just bear down as you cut away from you. Ooh, let's check and see. Oh, one perfect strip. That's great. And then just move it along and you can go ahead and once it's in that position, you can take it and just pull it back from the opposite end and just keep on cutting your strips that way. It goes great. Well, there's two sizes of strips that you're doing. You're doing the one and three-fourths and then the one-inch strip. And then two more that are one and three-fourths inches. These are the two that you'll see the most. Now, it's a quarter-inch seam allowance, and those Indian women used that fabric guide. And, oh, that was great to use. But you might want to use a magnetic seam guide. That works well. You just line that up against your presser foot. But there is now a new type of foot that is really absolutely great for this step. And it has a ridge. It has a little piece of uh, metal right next to the presser foot so that actually, as you push your strips through, it can only go up to that quarter inch. Why well, makes for straight, perfect strips, which is what you want when you do the seminal. Let me get this back in place and we'll get them going. Quarter inch seam, grab up your two strips, salvage to salvage, straight strips. Approximately um, 12 to 15 stitches to the inch. Well, I don't know if you want to hand crank these, you can. But a computerized sewing machine just works great too. So just line them up, get that presser foot right in the edge. You do need to hold your threads right at the beginning so they don't go in. But when you line them up, then that just feeds so beautifully right through there. Great for kids, perfect you know, for any type of straight seam sewing. So you're just gonna go ahead and line up your strips. Sew them together, one after the other, right through there. Well, of course, I have some of mine already sewn. I want to show you how they look. Take those strips right here. Here's two sets of them. I actually took one full strip and cut it in half. But once you have it sewn together, press your seams in opposite directions. This time, I pushed it towards the purple. On the one that's underneath, I pushed it away from the purple. I'm just going to take these two, and they are lined up perfectly. You just put them right sides together. The seams will interlock as you roll them into each other and just wiggle them. Get them all exactly in there. Well, let's move that a little bit so we can do it. Okay, now take your, take your cutter, take your ruler, and look for the 45 degree line. Right here is the 45 on this one. Here's the 45. Put it straight on your grid as best as you can. Line up the 45 degree line right across the top of the ruler and then you don't want to waste too much. Ooh, let me see. I've got to move that over because we don't want to waste that whole corner. And then just go ahead and cut that at the angle. You're going to take that, remove that, and get rid of that. Now, each one of these segments are one and a half inches wide. So once you have that one cut on there, line up the 45 degree line and you can go ahead and just line that line with the grid. Now the width of the strip is one and a half inches. So get it lined up at one and a half inches and then you just cut those pieces right sides together at that perfect angle. Oh, that's looking great. Now, out of one set of strips, you should be able to cut at least 15. You need to have 15 pairs per side. Then just take this piece. Now, those seams are going in opposite directions, so they should wiggle right together pretty well. Let's get that lined up right here. Got that point there. This is actually a very easy kind of seminole to do. Now, after I get it anchored, I like to open it up roll it back, look at it, make sure it's perfect, finger pin it, hold it down with the stiletto, and then just each one of these pieces, go over each one of them, finger pin, pull, whatever as I go down along. Whoops, I twisted that seam just a bit. Okay, you're going to assembly line sew 15 pairs for each side. I get to look first. I want to see how this matches. Oh my gosh, look at that. Pretty good. 
See, that is very easy to do when they're going in opposite directions. Now, you're going to take the pairs, take stacks of pairs, and then once you have stacks of pairs, flip them right sides together so that you're actually sewing four. And they wiggle right in once again. Get that lined up, squeeze that together, hold on to the end, open it up, look at it, make sure it's perfect, and then just zip right down. I think I did enough for, oh, a whole small quilt, probably in about an hour and a half time. That's not too bad. Thought it went pretty well. Actually, as Seminole goes, this is an easy match. Now, keep on continuously sewing until you have those 15 in a row like that. Yeah, wouldn't you know it. Got one set all ready to go. Because what you want to do is take and press it flat from, from one direction, press it all in one direction. And once you have that completed, just go ahead and line up your ruler. And you want to trim off those tips. You want to just trim off, trim those off so that you trim approximately a quarter to a half inch right off the top of those. Do it on both sides. Now, as soon as I get all of these done, I'll show you how to finish the quilt. Seminole Indian women enjoyed sewing in groups. They must have started the very first quilting bees. Well, we're so close to being done with this. Let's get it sewn together. First, you want to make your four star blocks. And then when those are actually ready to go together, this star right in the center comes from pieces that are added to the lattice. Let me show you those pieces. There are two different sets of piecing that you're going to do. Right here, you need to have pieced squares. You want to pair up this floral with the dark purple and then the light purple with the dark purple. Two different sets of squares placed right sides together draw on a diagonal line and sew down a quarter inch on both sides. Then you just want to cut on the diagonal, open it up, and square those pieces to one and three-fourths inches. And then once they're squared up, you just sew them together so that they look like that, one for each part of the star. Now this part comes from a piece of lattice that you take squares, one and three-fourths inch squares, and you put them right in the end, draw a diagonal line, Sew on that diagonal, trim it, and just pop it out. Oh, this is the easy way of making points. And then the second side is just another square, diagonal line, sewn, trimmed, and popped out. And then all you need to do is just take these two pieces and sew them together. Now make them a little long so that whenever you put them together with your star blocks, Oh, you've got something extra to trim off. Always a little extra helps. So sew your four blocks together, and you're going to have your star right in the center. Now, float your quilt. Take some light background, exactly the same color as your background. These are one and, one and three-fourths inch strips. Add those the whole way around the outside edge, all four sides. And then to help with your seminal, follow with a floral because that's exactly the same color in the seminal that touches it. Now the corner is the trickiest part. Oh, that's the part you want to get right. It's actually just two different sizes of squares that are cut in the diagonal and then sewn to either side of a very narrow strip. That's that seminal, the narrow strip of the seminal, the dark purple and the light purple. Sew four of those and clip them apart. Now the corner goes right down here. I literally took the seam allowance and pressed it under on both of these sides. So when you move that along, you can go ahead and see how you can get that lined up just so and square that off. Ooh, I have that turned around. That will never fit like that, will it? Well, this is much better, Eleanor. That looks right. Well, the word seminal comes from the Spanish word cimarron, and it means to run away. Now, perhaps it was from the runaway slaves that joined the Indians in Florida, or other Indians that just joined the tribe, too. Well, whatever. Just run away to your sewing room, and may you enjoy making your seminal quilt.